Okay, folks, so um, Shijulev and I sent Lickety split on, split on her way. She's starting up. We're here at 625, 222, whichever you want to call it, and uh, starting up the 2,000-foot uh, climb. And her instructions were, go your pace, and let's see how long it takes you. I'm just really curious. And uh, she's going to go basically the pace she's been working at, doing all the working out she did, getting prepared for this. So... We got a nice breeze and I uh, checked the Garmin weather. It looks like we're going to be fine. 30% chance of rain right now, 10% in about an hour, and uh, the weather in the 60s. So we should be fine. And hopefully, when we get up there, we're going to have a view of Bur Burke's Garden. So I am going to do my pace. Uh, I'm going to work on the uh, steady, kind of uh, deliberate, he called it the deliberate shuffle, but just a that deliberate paste so I'm gonna give it a try and see if it helps me to keep an overall more consistent steady pace and maybe be slightly faster but this is a very long uphill for 4.7 miles till we get to Chestnut Knob Shelter and uh, about 2100 feet total so it's gonna be a good test for me my legs are tired already so but I've been eating and eating for the last hour just pumping it in and drinking and so I feel good um, had a uh, vitamin I a little while ago, so it's kicked in. So let's see how long it takes me. And comparing me to me, not to anybody else. And uh, let's see what happens. See you along the way. This tree coming over took the trail out. It's the big ball of dirt of the And this is what's left of the trail, about six inches. Maybe you can see it from up here better, looking back. Look at that. Just took the trail out. All right. Um, so I'm going to throw something out as quick as I can just to uh, kind of dispel some, a few things. First of all, um, I want to thank you all again so much for following along, for your comments and for your entrance. All right, comments about you know comparing myself to different folks or whatever. Let me and I said this in a comment, but everybody may not read all the comments. So let me just say something to you know I don't talk about myself a lot in a like building myself up. It's just not my style but I'm gonna do it for a minute just so y'all know where I'm coming from, all right? I have a massive amount of confidence in myself. I probably am one of the, if not the, but one of the slowest hikers on this trail, and that's okay. Um, in other words, that doesn't change my level of confidence. My confidence is not in my speed, it's not in my strength, it's not in my muscles, it's in my mental capacity to keep going and in my desire. So. Part of my vlogging experience that I want to remember 20 years from now and that I would like my granddaughters to see, even, you know, if someday down the road they decide they want to watch Grandma's journey, you know, and as I've said, the journey is the destination. I mean, every moment out here, what I'm all about is what's between point A and B. So, uh, speed is only a factor in that, you know, there's a lot to get done and the chances of me getting it done at the rate I'm going are very slim but uh, if I don't I don't the journey is a destination and every aspect of it is a success for me I know what I'm up against physically and so I'm extremely proud of myself for what I'm doing even in a day like today I really don't feel good this heat makes me feel awful yesterday I drug myself those last three miles and started out today kind of feeling the same way thinking Okay, I'm going to be dragging myself. Well, my response to that is I'm going really short miles to try and uh, get my body acclimated to the heat. If it doesn't get acclimated to it, then somewhere along the way when it gets too hot, you know, I'll have to pull aside uh, or be sick. So hopefully that's not going to happen. So I'm doing everything I can to deal with the heat. My point is part of the vlogging experience and part of the journey is facing that 
other people are faster than me, and, and that's okay. And especially when it's my dear friend. Um, you know, when I talk about her, it's not, oh, woe is me, I'm slower. It's, oh my gosh, I am so proud of my friend and the kind of conditions she's been able to keep her body in, the fact that she is uh, able to do what she's able to do. And, and I really am curious. I'm curious how well she can do and what she can do. And I don't in any way compare it to me. I mean, it's like apples and oranges, as I said in the comment. We have two very different bodies. And so it doesn't diminish me that she's faster. It doesn't diminish me that uh, anything I say about her that's positive, it doesn't it diminish me in any way. And if I make a comment like, uh, you know, I'd love to be more energetic, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say that. Of course I'd love to be more energetic. Who wouldn't love to be more energetic when they're not? But it doesn't make me less confident. And it doesn't depress me. It doesn't make me want to get off the trail. It doesn't make me think less of myself. It's just a fact of life. So please let me make comments like that that are more about my memories than it is about, quote, comparison and something that might beat me down. Now, maybe for most folks, doing something like that would beat them down. But I love building up other people. That builds me up. And I've said before, I really do better when I have somebody along to encourage. Uh, being an encourager is just a kind of a thing for me. I love to be an encourager. So, um, yeah. I don't know if we can get the light to show up, but I'm betting my face is beet red. One hour in. Couldn't really drink while I was going up the hill, so at 30 minutes in, I stopped and chugged some Gatorade. At 45 minutes in, I stopped and chugged Gatorade. And uh, see how far we came. So uh, we went from 2310 to 3189, which is... Uh, 880 feet. Not bad. In 1.5 miles, hour and a half, I mean in one hour. And that was steady without taking breaks other than to drink, which I'm going to do now. And then we'll start on the second hour and see what happens. So anyway, whether it's Lickety Split or Soaring Eagle or whoever else might come along the way, people that might pass me, um, I'm going to build them up, and I may make little comments. For me, that's a humor thing that makes me laugh, and every time I laugh, I get endorphins, <laughs> and when I get endorphins, I feel better. So why don't y'all just go ahead and laugh along with it, knowing that none of that is taking me down. It actually is part of my being positive. Even though, for the average person, maybe it would be a negative. For me, it's not. It's absolutely not. So, and I'll try to keep that to a minimum because it seems to trouble people. But, uh, you know, even uh, how we're doing our evenings versus traditional through hike. These are important factors in the whole um, hiking of the trail because somebody coming behind me you know, you might be a person that needs to have vehicle assistance, who needs to, um, who is unable to sleep in a tent or a hammock or a, a shelter, who's only able to hike eight miles a day. And there are some things that, uh, information that I might be able to give that would be helpful to you. And even then, you know, the traditional and the really fast hikers some of the information that I'm able to give might be important for them. And um, so, yeah, but it's all given in a, uh, from my viewpoint, even when I'm tired and my voice may sound a little low, I'm not low, I'm tired. <laughs> Keep that in mind. But all of those things, 
it's all coming from a place of positive. Um, so, for me and my memories, it's important. And, uh, and I want my granddaughters to understand. And sometimes, you know, if somebody talks about challenges they may be facing, I mean, I can talk about being slow, okay? And that that was a real challenge because of that. It's not a negative, it's just a fact, okay? That when somebody walks by me and they're walking two, two and a half times or three times even faster than me, then it becomes visible. Wow, she kept going. They take three months, she takes nine months. That's a big deal. And it's a real um, plug for persistence. So it's all positive, it's all good, it's all great. And uh, yeah, don't y'all worry. I am just plugging along one mile at a time and loving the woods and loving the journey and loving that there's some people out there that are actually interested and that you all make the comments. So I'll try to just focus on the trail and y'all do the same. And uh, if I do get down, I'll let you know, I promise. If something is really bugging me, I'll let you know. But otherwise, yeah. So that's that. You see the bird? Anyway, there's the pond, just a uh, hundred feet or so down this little blue blaze. There's a W with an arrow on, on the rock. And right down in there, piped spring, get your water. There is another quote unreliable source up closer to the shelter, but it's, I don't think it's a spring. So even though you've got a little bit of up left, I would get my water back here. Last year I got water there. I don't need any right now. All right, we are headed into the woods over there. Before we go, off to my right. Overcast again, sprinkling going on. But that's your view from up here, folks. Pretty cool, pretty cool. That's what's up above us. Trying to peek through all these clouds. So we have uh, less than 500 feet left up and about 1.7 miles left. So that second hour we did about 1.5 miles per hour also. Uh, that was with not counting the five minutes that I took the break after the end of that first hour. So not bad, not bad at all. Walk through the woods a little while, and then I think we come back into the open again for the shelter. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, folks, so we came up over the grassy area. That wasn't too bad. And then we have this little, not too long area with rocks. It's almost like an old lumber road or something, I don't know, but anyway. And pretty soon we'll pass an unreliable water source up here. That's uh, Littles in front of me. 
that we met earlier today. And uh, she came back just to walk with me. <laughs> so, this last mile, I'm, I mean, this last hour, there's no doubt in my mind I'm doing it slower because my legs are really getting tired. But I done, I, I'm really encouraged. Uh, that I've been averaging about one and a half miles an hour on this uphill. Very encouraging to me, and you all told me I'd be able to do that if I just keep at it, so you were right, as I've said before. So I'm gonna get on up to this shelter, and I'm gonna let my legs rest just a minute before we start the downhill. So that's the plan, and we'll show you Burke's garden. One of the most beautiful places on earth. Hopefully we'll be able to see all the way down into the garden. There it goes Littles up to the uh, shelter. And the first thing I'm going to do is walk over and see the view. As you see it's closed in, got a door, got, went, got glass in the windows. We'll look at that in a minute. Let's go up over this hill. I want to show you Burke's garden. This, my friends, is one of the most beautiful places on earth. And they say that the property values in there are about three times higher than everywhere else around it. So. Got up here, it was, you know, getting really cloudy. Yeah. And, it, it sound, and because of that roof, it sounded worse on the... Was it a metal roof? I didn't even look. Yeah. I forgot to video the shelter. Sorry, folks. You can look at last year's health hike videos if you want to see it and trail terrain videos if I ever get them up. Anyway, so, yeah, maybe I can get Lickety Split to uh, give me one of her stills. Um, so we're headed down to Walker Gap and got this awesome view off to the side here. This is not the Burke's Garden side, this is the other side. Anyway, the sun came back out again. So it's supposed to start raining at 5 a.m. and bring in a cold front and go down to 39 with a wind chill of 30 at 11 a.m. That's up at Chestnut Knob, so it won't be quite that cold down where we're going, I guess. But anyway, this has been a great day. I'm very encouraged. And, uh, oh, yeah, so I need to tell you, lickety split. So she made it in two hours. Um, just doing her normal, you know, pace, like the pace that was comfortable for her, and that was uh, 4.7 miles and 2,100 feet up. So everybody, give her a hand. That is awesome, awesome, awesome. Coming out to the trail, trail ready, pretty miraculous. So. Everybody have a good evening. I don't think there's anything any different than this for the rest of the way down to this uh, Walker Gap where we're going to be staying. And if there is, I'll show it. Otherwise, we will see you next time. Well, we are here at Walker Gap at the road, and we have no trail angel. So, I still got service down here. Good. 
Maybe I will too. So we're walking down this road because as it turns out, G was, uh, this road is paved for a while and then suddenly it becomes dirt and apparently he's not been able to get up the beginning of the dirt road. So we should run into him down here before too long, if I remember correctly. Um, it's not that far before we get to where the road is paved. So hopefully he's right down here, not too far. And uh, if we need to just start from here tomorrow and walk back up this hill, then we'll just start from here tomorrow and walk back up this hill. So with that storm coming in in the morning, we might be better being lower anyway, so not sure where we'll park to camp, but we'll figure something out. So if you can see right up there, he got stuck. Anyway, there's a hostel over here somewhere. We may just see about going to it tonight and um, stay there.